at the Mount Kenya University where Ruth and Halima chewed medical books and journals for four years, including practicing on some of these cadavers. The varsity's faculty at the College of Health Sciences is proud of the program. In this country, it's the first university to train uh, clinic officers at that level uh, in 2009. All the world over, we have a program called Physician Assistance, which is almost a replica of what you're offering. Uh, like in America, that is a very strong cadre. But uh, generally in Africa, we don't have uh, many universities training, or uh, before then, universities training clinic officers at that level. That's why even in our program at the moment, we still have people from Zambia, we still have people from Malawi, uh, uh, people from Sudan, people from Somalia who are training with us now, who had done a, a diploma, because in their countries it's not there. From the bachelor's, we already started the master's program. Very soon we are starting the PhD program. And we also want the, uh, the course also to have branches just like MBCSB where we have other different courses. We'll also go to the line of foreign sick medicine, internal medicine. This degree program is not a preserve of Mount Kenya University. Six other universities offer this degree program and continue to do so, namely Igaton University, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Kabarak University, Great Lakes University of Kisumu, University of Kabianga, and Meru University of Science and Technology. CAP 260 establishes the Clinical Officers Council, the regulator where the Director of Medical Services or his representative sits. The council registers clinical officers who have, and I quote, successfully undergone a prescribed form of training at an approved training institution. Registered clinical officers with this degree are 329, while those registered with diplomas are 19,807. Out of this, approximately 30 with degrees and 5,000 with diplomas are employed in the public sector, while about 6,000 are in private or non-governmental organizations. Another 7,000 try their luck moonlighting or doing something completely different. I know there were challenges with the first batches that, we, that were trained. A few of them were absorbed by the counties. And you remember they, were, they, start, they graduated when, when you are going the devolution way. So that confusion of uh, the counties you can see in health care is in all the cadres, not only in the clinic officers. I had done a consultation and uh, according to my understanding, they were not going to be like full medical officers. But they were supposed to be deployed under the supervision of the medical officers, and they will be supervising the diploma clinical officers. So they will be laying in between the diploma clinical officers and the medical clinical officers. In 2013, the government started uh, taking them. Immediately they graduate, we send them to the ministry and they are taken for internship, and they are paid. An internship compensation that Ruth says did not come easy. We demonstrated for internship. We were doing our internship free for 12 months. Uh, plus in internship we do a lot for a whole year with no pay, and it was so difficult for, for us. The difficult times are not yet over for these graduates. We are just struggling with low comes, mm -hmm. Some private ent enterprises like myself here, it's a private, so currently I'm on a contract. When we see advertisements for jobs, we just see diploma in clinical medicine. We, we wonder, where are we? Am I supposed to apply like a diploma holder? Because that's what we've been doing. We've opted to do it, we've opted to apply like a diploma holder, at least to get that salary, other than stay home and be nowhere. It has not been uh, marketed enough, if I may say so, or they have not been sensitized uh, for them to be able to understand the value addition that you may have uh, if you employed a degree clinic officer vis-a-vis -a, -vis a diploma clinic officer. The pharmacy diploma holders, the pharmaceutical technologists, you can see there is a very big uh, difference between a person with a diploma in uh, 
pharmacy and a person with a degree in pharmacy. The degree pharmacy, pharmacy people eh, graduate with a uh, degree in pharmacy. They are now have a title, doctors. They join internship. After internship, they are absorbed directly. So you see, for them, there is an advantage. Even anybody looking at it would wish to do the degree in pharmacy. And you look at the diploma in pharmacy. They finish school. They go through the hustling, wait for advertisement. But for them, pharmacy diploma is widely and advertised almost every financial year. So you see, for them, there is a clear cut out, and the diploma side is not that bad because counties are readily taking them in. I don't have any regrets. In fact, I'm very proud to see that my daughter has got a knowledge, and I would not have gone sh short of that. Because if you think education is expensive, you should try ignorance. She is capable of doing something on her own. A lot of them have gone to into teaching, and especially the diploma programs, because we have quite many, like the KMTC, where initially they were being taught by the, it was a diploma teaching another diploma. Mount Kenya also has a few what we call instructors who instruct uh, our students in the wards. We have quite a number of them in the NGOs, uh, research institutions. Well, we understand the clinical officers are not supposed to be performing some major operations. But we saw in the government when the doctors went on strike, mm -hmm. they gave a memo to the clinical officers to be able to do some surgeries, especially like deliveries, the caesarean sections. To Halima and Ruth, the genesis of this predicament scales way up to the originators of this course. This is my clinical officer's council certificate. I got it on 3rd July 2017, after I finished my internship. Don't start a course when you don't know where it's headed. People are still doing their degree in clinical medicine. There are, not, there are no jobs out there. As it is now, I'll be skeptical when advising somebody to join the course. When you're joining a, a, high, a degree, a course, eh, at a higher level, there's some expectations you want to get. But if at the end of the day, what the diploma clinical officer does, and the hustling and the tarmacking is the same for the degree clinical officer, I would not think anybody after seeing all this will wish to join the course. And it's painful for parents who have taken so much pain to educate their children, especially in the field of medicine, which is part of the government priorities to make sure that each and every Mwananchi gets a good health. Omar and Halima have tried other options to get out of the current frustrations. I went back to the drawing board, I even went back to the school I studied, I applied for medicine, I went up to Uganda, Makarere University, I applied for medicine, but with no results. But they were happy with her grades and uh, they were ready to use her degree as a stepping stone to be able to do a full medical. The option that these clinical officers have to attain their dreams of being doctors is not appealing. I'd look for money to do that parallel course in medicine and surgery. I'll start from scratch, which is so unfair. <laughs> I start from zero. I've done all these years, then I go starting from scratch. It's not. It's been years of struggle getting into med school until now. I'm, I'm not looking into going back to med school because of the age and other options I have in life. I had the high expectation that she was going to get a good job, probably in the government. Yeah. I love getting jobs. It has really been difficult for us to get jobs. Counties are not advertising for jobs. You go to they're asking you what's the difference between you and a diploma holder. Why should I employ you and leave the diploma holder who will pay less compared to you? If you are talking about universal health care, then we have to utilize all the human, uh, the, the health human resource that we have in this country. Because only then will this country then be able to deliver the universal health care that we are talking about. Our country require health services, I mean health care uh, personnel, and uh, we are here to impact that knowledge. We hope we'll one time reach the WHO requirements where you have enough, uh, enough uh, doctors for the population. We, we hope to reach there. I must uh, appreciate the clinic officers council, the regulator, 
who have gone out now to talk to the counties. They are, they are, they are doing what is called a scope of practice so that the counties and uh, uh, the employers can be able to understand this is what a clinical officer is supposed to do. That is almost ready and I know it's going to come out very soon. And that will, help, will, will alleviate some of these problems they are facing. The smiles that Halima and Ruth have mask a deeper frown. They may have no option but to embrace the cards that life has dealt them. Cards that have them as almost doctors, yet so far. In a country admittedly with a huge shortage in the healthcare workforce, the likes of Halima and Ruth and hundreds others who graduated with them or the hundreds more undergoing a similar training wonder what their place is or will be in the Kenyan public health system. Dr. Masikorir, for KTN News.